same relationship questions over and over and over. <laughs> this is true, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Joel Elston here. Today is Thursday, March the 14th, 2019. It's 8 a.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Los Angeles. It's actually 12 noon in London. Sydney, Australia, I believe, is at 11 p.m. at night. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for tuning in for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And uh, the only thing unhappy today is Facebook apparently is continuing to experience some pretty severe issues to the point where we can't even live stream today. So if you had tuned into the live stream hoping to hear us and you couldn't hear us, that's why. We apologize. There's nothing we can do about it. But, I mean, if, if Facebook won't you know, receive the connection, then we're kind of dead. Not much we can do. But we'll continue anyway. That's the good thing about a podcast, Joel, because regardless of what happens with all of that, hey, there's still the podcast to listen to. And that's where most of the audience is anyway. So, no, that's the good news. Yeah, and, and we're here, and like I said, the stuff that's out of our control we can't deal with, but it's great to be here. Uh, I'm in central Virginia today, and we're having an incredibly beautiful day, so mm. uh, that's making up for the Facebook life. That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah, and and uh, when, you, when you said that just now, the way you said it reminded me of something. It's how we react. How are we going to react to the fact that Facebook isn't working? We could be throwing a fit, right? I mean, we, we could get all upset about yeah. it. <laughs> And, and then we detract all these wonderful, yeah, yeah. nasty things into our lives. That they're like more things going wrong. Computers breaking down, smartphones not working, cars breaking down, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it, you see it, you know, I see it all the time with, with my work. And, and I, I see examples in my personal life, too, over the years of how, how when I would get into this, this state of mind where everything's going wrong and everybody is against me and, and all this stuff keeps happening – and you know, I thought I'm cursed, and <laughs> in the more the more I thought that, the more it became true. Yeah, and then right. I realized it, it's my perspective. Like right now, Facebook isn't working; it's it's properly. I can sit here and get upset about that. I can sit there and make a big deal out of that. I can go on and on. Or Facebook isn't working. It's just that that's how it is. Mm. And uh, uh, you, you know, the, the, things are going to happen. The law of this attraction responds to what we feel or what we actually are feeling toward what happens. You're right. in control of that. And that, that, that's the emotion that we talk about every week in some form or fashion of here's where we go. We, we, you know, things are happening. Facebook's going to break. Your car's going to break. But money's going to uh, need, you're going to need unexpected bills. Uh, there's going to be help stuff and how you respond to it is what dictates comes after that. I mean, it's such an important factor to understand that emotional response, as long as you keep it in that, you know, here we are. What, we're, are we focusing on the fact we're able to do the podcast? Or are we focused on the fact that it isn't going to be on Facebook? We get to choose that. And and that, that the rest of our day can a lot depend on how we choose to respond to that one little event. So, woohoo, we can still do the podcast. At least the podcast software works. So, I mean, that's the most important part because that's where like 95% of our listeners are anyway, you know. So, woohoo. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that's good. And, and, and that, that, that's what I want you to, uh, you know, want us to continue to be that person because it's such a, uh, not only is it what we believe in, but it's such an incredible uh, happiness tool when you understand that and it, it's you, you can fight the battle uh or or you can just you know j just accept this is where it is and i gotta I, you know i get to i still get to do what the point of it the point is the podcast and we're mm. able to do that we had a great example of what we're talking about here happened to louise and i yesterday and i'm, I'm not um I'm not able to go into the details of it, so I'll have to tell it in a really g generic way. But um, we're, we're dealing with a financial issue, and it also involves the business, Louise's gardening business. And yesterday, things were looking really bleak from our perspective. I mean, really, really right. bleak. And we had a meeting with, with somebody that was an important meeting. And in the course of this meeting, we got some new information. It wasn't really new information. It was It was a new way of looking at this information that uh, this person had told us about previously, but we never really kind of developed it. So our understanding of it was kind of limited. 
But we filled out that understanding. And by the end of the meeting, we realized that our financial situation was so much better than we thought it was. Now, nothing actually changed. The, the, the financial situation hasn't moved one inch, but the way we saw it changed. And we walked into that meeting well, feeling it, miserable, yeah. and, we, and then we walked out feeling wonderful. <laughs> well, and, and here's a uh, here's a, an example. And again, I can speak to a, an active case I'm working on right now. And again, I will okay. also be pretty general. Sure. Um, I have a, a client, and a client is has a, a gambling issue, and for the for I don't know the twentieth time in in his life. Uh, he has created a lot of financial problems, and, mm. and some of them potentially legal problems. He's, mm. he's done some scams uh, with the banks, and wow. uh, he, he's written some bad checks. And yeah. he, he, he sold some stuff that uh, you know through a, a you know through a marketplace where that you know they use PayPal, and so there, there's there's several things going on. So every day his check account a checking account is uh, just getting further and further, and he's getting pounded with these overdraft fees. Well, his family uh, is saying, look, we're, we're tired of this. You need to go to residential treatment. It's time. Mm-hmm. And and it, it, we, we've done this for a long, long time. Well, residential treatment, the concept of residential treatment is, first of all, to take a time out from life to sort of address everything right? and and deal with the emotional issue of how are we getting there? What What's the underlying cause? What is the problem beyond the fact you can't stop gambling. There's got to be something psychological or emotional going on here. Mm-hmm. And so the family very generously, uh, they, have, they have access to great wealth. And so the family, you know, they could snap their fingers and, and solve this financial problem again for the 20th time, uh, or they could get to the root of the cause. So it's going to actually cost a lot more to get to the root of the cause. But they're, they're saying, we're not going to address any of the financial stuff until mm-hmm. uh, this comes up. So this client who has intentionally not looked at his checking account, which is, you know, like by not looking, there's like, I don't have to think about it. Right. And, you know, we, he finally bought in yesterday to the concept, I need to go to treatment and, uh, and, and, you know, and really understanding the underlying cause and everything is fine. I said, now you need to look at your checking account because we do need to address these issues, but the issues will be addressed when you get to treatment or on, when you're on your way to treatment. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm scared to look at my account. I said, what is in the account is already there. It's your response to the account that's going to matter. And I said, what you're going to do is you're going to look at it. And it's going to freak you out uh, historically. I mean, and, and, and then you're going to get into a, the mindset again. you got to fix this. And, the, and this story will make sense. You know, uh, some of these issues are potentially criminal, as I mentioned. And that right. obviously is something that the family is trying to avoid. Mm-hmm. However, the, the, separate from that, there's a civil issue, and meaning, you know, and for those who don't know, criminal, you can go to jail. Civil, you can't, but you can, you know, you obviously it messes up your credit, and it's more of a, a just a financial thing on the civil side. And so the family's trying to walk the line of, we're not going to worry about the civil stuff, but we're going to prevent the criminal stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, since the, the client used PayPal, PayPal has a protection for their their buyers, and they refund money regardless of what they, they protect their client. Right. So since this client, my client sold stuff that, that uh, he, you know, couldn't fulfill mm-hmm. and PayPal, when it came in and they fixed it, well, he's still going to owe the money, but it's not going to be a criminal act. There's a reason I'm telling this long story. And so as he opened his bank account, he freaked out. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's just, now it's not, not new information. Walt. This right. is information that's already been there. Right. He was all calmed down, ready to go to treatment. Yes, that's how I'm going to solve it. But when he looked at this information, he became overwhelmed back into that mindset again. I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I said, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed before you opened that, that. That information was there. Right. None of this is criminal, which has been your big fear. Uh, civilly, they're going to, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do civilly uh, afterward. I can't declare bankruptcy and send nobody. Nobody mentioned bankruptcy. We're going to have to figure it out, but your response is going to be in treatment. And so, anyway, the point the point that I'm making is he changed his attitude multiple times once he was able to, you know, once he was able to calm down. He said, "Yeah, I got this. Everything's fine." And then, oh my God, everything's terrible. 
oh, everything's fine, everything's terrible. It's back and forth, mm-hmm. and all of it was depending on how he was looking at it, sort of yeah. what you're talking about. Right. Your response to what comes on through all this is the important thing. The, the mess that he's totally responsible for, there's no one else he could be angry about but himself, uh, but yet he's, he's like, I have to, I don't know what I'm going to do if this doesn't get fixed. And it's just this desperation state. So every piece of news that's coming is what? So he's a, a basket case. And so we're trying to get him calmed down and get him to treatment where he obviously needs to deal with all this. And, and so the perspective of how we looked at it, that's a great example of how one moment everything's fine. I'm going to treatment. You're right. I need to work on this too. My world's falling apart. Nothing changed, but how he was looking at it. Isn't it amazing how just something that simple, we allow it to throw ourselves so much. I mean, we just, I mean, it's on one hand, it's not amazing at all. It's like normal, like, well, of course, I've had this terrible thing happen to me. So now I'm in a a downward spiral. Yeah, okay. We're we're used to that. But on the other hand, nothing actually changed. (laughs) That's so amazing about it. (laughs) Right. And, 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 and I've seen that, you know, I've seen that over the years. Uh, one of my, one of my, uh, the most amazing cases of the head of the, for many, many years ago, I was working with, with uh, a lady and I was in South Carolina and she, she had another gambling problem and, and she came to treatment and this was back when the housing crisis was going on. And I was just, you know, trying to help her with her gambling problem. She was gambling really bad, couldn't make her house payment. And so, uh, She came to treatment. She brought with her a registered letter from the mortgage company. Mm -hmm. Now, she never opened that letter. So about a week and a half uh, into treatment, she said, uh, uh, we're really worried about, uh, I'm really worried about this. I haven't opened this letter. And I go, well, open the letter so we know what to do. Mm -hmm. I want to help you with this. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, no, no, I can't open the letter. I can't open it. I go, What's in the letter is already in the letter. You can't change it. So let's 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 get take action. Let's let's use the best thing we have as action. Let's get in front of this. So she's okay. Okay, I'll do this. And so as, anyway, after a little bit of time, probably about a week later, I said, "We have you opened the letter? No, I haven't opened the letter." I mm-hmm. said, "Look, if, if you're going to stay in treatment, I had to make I had to threaten to kick her out if she wasn't going to do it because it just wasn't being productive, you know. Right, right. And uh, I said, it, it, it's something you have to do. She opens the letter, Walt, now, and, and I've used it using rough days, but let's say today's sure. the 14th of March. Let's say it was the you know 14th of March. She opened the letter, and the mortgage company said, we're sorry to hear you're having such difficulty. We have a program because so many people are going to the default. If you contact us by the 16th of March, <laughs> we will – we, we we have a plan that will delay, you know, please call us. And mm-hmm. So it, it, it was like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? So we called them, and the lady was very understanding. She said, well, we just need a proof that you're in treatment, which I was able to give her. And she said, I'll tell you what we'll do. You have a 90-day moratorium on payments. Uh, we will take the arrears payment, and we'll just put them on the back. Uh, and, and then if you want to catch it up along the way, over a year period, you could pay a little extra, get caught up, or worst case scenario, it's just on the back end. Totally wow. resolved the problem with one phone call. And it, 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 it went from I'm losing my house to everything's crazy to, huh, that was simple. And, and her perspective was based on what the, situ- the situation was always the same in the letter. But we do that. We, we, we think we're expecting the worst. In this case, if she would have, her, if her instinct of not opening a letter would have continued two or three more days, they would have begun foreclosure process. Right. And, and, and it would have fulfilled itself. But fortunately, we broke that cycle. Right. And then she's like, wow, wow, I'm seeing this. That changed her perspective. And, mm-hmm. and, and then once she got, once that happened, she completed treatment, did well. I mean, talked to her six months after that. She had caught everything up. The, wow. the, everything was fine. But you see that so much is there, Walt. That, that's the amazing thing when you look at it. It's, it is. We all experience things daily. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so much is, is, is so cliche, but so much of how we, we experience it is in our control. Uh, our experience, when we're controlling it the right way, will yield outcomes based on how we approach it, period. What you're describing reminds me of a term that you and I haven't used in quite some time. You brought it to the show, and I don't remember when it was. It was a few years ago. 
but it was the term awfulizing and how awfulizing yeah. is, is our way of, of taking something that could really be seen in a number of different ways and making it as bad as humanly possible. <laughs> Another amazing thing. How do we take something that's like neutral and turn it into something amazingly horrible? But we do that. We're good at it. <laughs> Well, and, and, you know, here, here's an example for me. Um, it, it was, uh, it, I've done this for a long time, and while I don't claim to be the best one at it, I, I, I live a pretty positive life, and I've pretty much learned things in a lot of ways. So I'm very adapt to this. Well, I have this service you can get from the post office where it sends you your mail for the day. It sends you photocopies of what you're getting in the mail. It's a really cool service. Hmm. And the benefit of that is if something's ever lost in the mail, you know it was on the process of being delivered. Right. So um, so I get a copy of this every morning. In most days I look at it, and it's no big deal. You, know, you don't pay attention to it. But one morning I was uh, on my way to work, and I hit the button and hit my email, and I opened it up. I was at a stoplight, and there was a letter that was going to be delivered that day for the IRS. Ooh. Huh. I said, well, what's the IRS card? I mean, this was the like June, the middle of the year. There's nothing. I could not come up with a reason right. that the IRS would be contacting me at all. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using my best skill set and said, well, you know, I'll find out later this afternoon. Whatever it is, I, I'm in a position to handle it. I've done nothing wrong. I'm, I, I pay all of my taxes. I report all of my cash income. I'm obsessive about all this stuff. So I said, there's zero problem. But no matter what, I just kept thinking about what is the IRS? What is the IRS? That's old thinking. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm like, well, you know, what, what is, I mean, you know, because many, many years ago when, when I was struggling with my gambling addiction, I certainly wasn't doing my taxes properly. Uh, and, and I was, did they go back 20 years and do that? I mean, you, you think these crazy scenarios. And, uh, and, and so I'm just, as, by the time I got home, I had, I was, I was nervous. I'm like, oh gosh, what is this? So it, the, the bill's there. I mean, the, the thing was there, not a bill. The thing was there. I opened, you know, opened it up, and it was a, it was a check for a dollar and sixty seven cent. <laughs> I had miss I had miss I had overpaid my account by a dollar sixty seven. Number one, I wish I would have just kept the check. But second, I I, I I went more than anything. In fact, I, I kept the check, and I have it somewhere as a reminder to mm. me. That, you know, why do we do this? Why is it? Why is that awfulizing? So even after I spent years stopping that, it can find its way back in. Mm -hmm. And 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 now, fortunately, there was no other consequences. And I and, and I, I insisted on using it as a reminder. Mm -hmm. But I did have a four or five hour period there where I was getting back into that awfulizing thing. I, I was all yeah. what's the word? And the truth is, if I really look at it. Let's say I messed up on my calculations and I owed them five thousand dollars. Well, I certainly don't want to check write a check for five thousand dollars, but the fact I can is okay. You know what I mean? Yep. It, it, it just it's no big deal. No matter what was going to take place with that, and you know, and, and and this was just a letter from the IRS. I tell people all the time, don't ever worry about the IRS. And you know, you you can get a little concerned when you get a registered letter. But when the IRS is really interested, they knock on doors. So, you know, it, it, don't ever worry about just a letter from the IRS. It is a long way before there's – even if it's a problem, it's a long way before it's a problem. Uh, and, and so I know all this. I deal with this all the time. I deal with people with financial issues all the time. But yet when it came to me, I was able to take it from a very good day, and, and my awfulizing made me have less than a great day. And and I I use that reminder and just like you're saying we we do that we're program uh, the the mind it's a protective state of mind that awfulizing state of mind and I deal with it so much that uh, it it it's you, I'm not shocked by it but I I I am reminded that it's much more pervasive than we realize mm -hmm. how everybody awfulizes almost every day to some degree. I can give you an example of it also from another perspective, one of I am the victim. <laughs> uh, and mm. this particular example, I, I was having a chat a few days back with a guy who is a business broker, somebody who engages in helping people who have a business to sell their business or help somebody else who wants to get into a business to buy a business. And as we're talking, he was going on and on 
because of uh, obviously uh, also Louise and I, Louise has her gardening business, so that was part of the conversation, right? You know, that, that industry that we're in. So, like most people, he kind of equated to landscaping, which it really isn't. It's not really the same thing, but that's the way most people see it. They see it as being part of the same thing. And he said, it's amazing how many people in landscaping, in restaurants, he, he named like four or five different fields, um, how everybody cheats on their taxes. And he sees it because, of course, he sees. You know the, the the tax records, the Schedule C's. You know all the all the the stuff that indicates what people are actually reporting to the IRS, and he sees it all the time. And I mean, he just he he he's constantly seeing it because when you're selling a business, one of the things that they do is they add back in to your reporting revenue, the revenue that you present to a client, the revenue that you hit. <laughs> that's the best that's the most direct way to say it um you know because like right. people will will take like a cash payment and not run it through the business or you know so you know right. that way it's a thousand dollars tax-free that kind of thing or you know they'll, they'll they'll play games with you know they'll they'll report deductions that they really shouldn't report and all kinds of stuff like this and it literally adds up to tens hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes i mean huge amounts of people of, oh, of yeah. uh, money that people who are entrepreneurs are just not reporting and in the course of that conversation, I said, you know, this may sound strange, but we run everything through the business. We're 100% above board. And he interpreted, this is really interesting, he interpreted that to mean that all of our transactions in the business, we, re, we, we don't take inappropriate deductions on. We just report exactly what we should be reporting under the government. But he also, inter under government guidelines, but he also interpreted it as if we do get a cash payment, we don't actually run it through the business. And after I realized that's what he was thinking, I said, no, no. I mean, everything. We, we do everything 100% above board. And his jaw almost fell to the floor. He had, he yeah. hadn't, it had been years since he'd heard anybody say, I actually do everything the right way. And as he was reacting that way, first of all, it was funny. Second of all, I felt myself inside saying, there it is again. I, here I am. I'm an honest person and I'm being taken advantage of because I'm paying so many more, much more in taxes than these other people who are making so much more money than I am because they won't, I, I was doing that kind of thing. So we had two different people right. doing two different kinds of offwising in the same conversation. <laughs> right, right. And, 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 that, and that's such a relevant thing that you're seeing there, Walt. I mean, that when, you, when you can identify, at least again, in my mind, when you can identify you know, when you, you see how he was going, his mindset was expecting a certain thing. You yeah. you get into a defensive mindset like, yep. yeah, everybody does this. You know, one of the things I, I've learned lessons in life, and I'm like you, every thing, I've had people pay me in cash. I prefer checks. It's easier to keep up with it. Or I, I pay, I use PayPal or, or one of the other online. I take all the forms of payment. Um and, and and I I actually prefer them to pay. It costs me a little money, but I pref it helps my bookkeeping if they pay with one of the payment things. And sure. I give up some money there. I realize. Yeah. Uh, but but again, I, I report every single thing. So I have I have clients say, well, who do you want me to make the check out to? Well, my business is Joel Elston Coaching. So if you just make it out Joel Elston, that's fine. Or Joel Elston Coaching, I don't care. And so so I'll just make it out to Joel Elston. So that'll help you with your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like. Right. It won't, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to prove a point to him, but I point out it won't change my tax. She said, "Well, you won't have to report." And I go, "I report every penny of income." Mm. And and she, I, I don't know why you did. And we had this. And she said, "You're paying." She said, "Nobody reports their cash." And I go, "I do for multiple reasons." And and so uh, it was this weird thing that she was shocked that I did it. Yeah. And never, she never understood. She said, I just don't get it. She said, there's no way they could find out. I go, that, that's not, you're missing the point. There's not, that's not why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it because they'll find out. It's, if I operate doing it this way, I have more of an abundance when I do it the right way. When I, I just learned that. That's how my work, life works. And it was, it, 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 she was truly baffled that I did not just automatically say, yeah, yeah. Right. you know, don't, don't worry about it. I love cash better. It, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a, uh, a, the way you look at it, uh, your perspective toward it. And, and, you know, I, I find I operate on a higher vibrational level when I, I do it in an honest way. And at least my perspective on what an honest way. I think so. Well, I, I love the phrase she used. It was so perfect. She says, they'll never find out. 
And when we analyze that phrase right. from a law of attraction perspective, the universe doesn't understand no. So in order to understand that right. phrase from a law of attraction perspective, you take the word never out because it doesn't understand that part. And then you read it again. And it says they'll find out. <laughs> so you're yeah. setting yourself up by putting out a vibration that says they'll find out. <laughs> well, and, and also one of the things that you know I, I've I've also realized when you when you take away and not that this is whatever happened, but but say you you have um, there are people that that you know don't like people to be successful. There's people that mm. uh, you know. If you get somebody angry at you for for whatever reason, and somebody uh, somebody just simply says, "Hey, um, I'm going to report you to the IRS. I think you're cheating." You know, I'm like, "Well, I'm certainly not. Nobody wants an audit, but they can come audit if they want. There's nothing. There's there's zero missing. It's a. Uh, it, 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 I have no. No one has leverage over me because I'm not doing the right things. I live with a clear conscience on that. Also, I prevent anyone from having leverage. You don't put yourself in a position of, of being able to be taken advantage of. Mm. And that's such a great way to live. And, and again, the law of attraction operates on how we're feeling. So if I'm not living in that mindset of, of oh my God, what's gonna happen here? And, and by cutting your, your awfulizing down and all this other stuff, the, the, the law of attraction just keeps giving you quality stuff. Mm. And stuff will happen. There, there's going to be those days where everything seems to go entirely wrong. The, the law of attraction doesn't prevent those from happening. Right. What it does prevent from happening is teaching you your response to those events will determine how they, first of all, how they unfold and what else you're going to invite into your life. Mm, and that yeah. that's the big difference. It, it, it you know, A lot of people get mistake. Well, I've been practicing law of attraction and bad things keep happening. I go, your perspective of things that are bad keep happening. I've, I know you don't get that, but that's how it works. Here's an interesting example of a situation where somebody was in really dire financial straits, which means, of course, that their mindset had been consistent with being in dire financial straits. So it was not a good mindset they'd been in for the longest time. But for this one moment in time, moment being defined in terms of like days, um, for this one moment in time, they had managed to change the mindset a bit. And they, the, the, there were two people involved. It was a son and his mother. Um, they were living in a really, really bad place, really awful. Um, the rent was exorbitantly high. What they got for the rent was really awful. It was just nobody would want to live in a place like this. And it, they were just in misery, absolute misery. Well, like I said, for whatever reason, I won't even get into the reasons. Um, the son, who pretty much runs everything, the mother is pretty much dependent, completely dependent, and, and not all together there mentally and so forth. So it's, it's pretty much up to the son. The son had gotten him to his, himself into a relatively good place. And so he was trying to make some progress, making little bits of progress here or there. Not lots, but, you know, he was, he was shifting things in, in very small micro steps. Well, there was this one person who lived in the, in the same complex he lived in who had it in for him. He just decided that this guy had wronged him or something like that. And so he contacted the state and told the state that my friend had been abusing his mother. And so the state mm -hmm. sent out an investigator to find out, you know, is this guy abusing his mother? In the course of their investigation, they learned, uh, well, they, all they had to do was walk in the door and see how bad the situation was in terms of what their living situation was and talk to him and learned about what the financial situation was and how bad that was. Anyway, instead of uh, taking him in for abusing his mother, because clearly he wasn't abusing him, he was just trying to deal with a bad situation as best he could. There was no real actual abuse going on. The state worker, instead of bringing him in on charges, put him in touch with somebody regarding another state program that would provide something like up to $3,000 a month support so he could take care of his mother. <laughs> Which was wow. the exact well, opposite it, it, of what yeah. this other guy wanted. This other guy wanted him to get in trouble. He actually got a benefit out of it. <laughs> well, it, 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 yeah, like the lady that I've, I've talked about with a mortgage. So it, it, you, the anticipation of the negatives uh, is is the the awfulizing technique of of everything's going to work out for the the worst and right. that's what ha when you start developing it, or realize there there's unexpected twists in life there the, I happen I'm a big believer and 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 this is this happens in my life a lot I'm a huge believer in when you take action what do you respond no matter what it is 
life will set you up for the best scenario when your mindset allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I know people that have been placed in what are seemingly impossible situations and then propelled to a higher level of standard of living or in a, in a dream situation. They really, they, they had no choice, but to do it, but they didn't want to do it. They thought it was going to be horrible. It, it, it's this fear based existence. We talk about the body or the mind's need for homeostasis. It doesn't want to change. Mm. It wants to stay where you're at. And let's protect yourself with that. We don't want to do this versus the next level is out there. The next level is scary. You know, the, the old statement that the, the old saying, which is one of my favorites, that, you know, a, a ship is most safe in the harbor. <laughs> but that's not what ships are built for. You know, it, it's not the intent of the ship to stay in the harbor. It's to go out and, and, and explore and go and, and, and travel. And, and that's sort of what our life is. But we get stuck on uh, on the fear-based existence. And all that can happen is things that keep you stuck. I see people stuck with the same scenarios over and over and over for years because they never have the, uh, the, the ability to step out. we got to break the pattern. And that's the, that's the hardest thing to do, Walt, because it's such an easy pattern to get in often. The illusion of security is in the patterns of you know, negativity often. And oh, so yeah. negativity is, becomes a comfort mm -hmm. zone. It, it's like, I, I don't want to get my hopes up because I'll fail. I'm, I'm reading a book right now called Mindset. The, uh, I forget the whole name, but it, Mindset is by uh, Professor Carol Dweck. And uh, it just... just she talks a little bit about the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, which is some of my, you know, that, that's my biggest uh, sort of concept when I'm working with people. Mm -hmm. And so many people operate on a fixed mindset. Yeah. And that's why some people are, are emboldened, that some people grow through traumas and, and cataclysmic events, and other people are defeated by them. It isn't the events, it's how we respond. It's just what we're saying here. So it, it, it's just, and she she has multiple examples of uh, uh, of what you know well known people or less well known people who uh, all have responded to, at different levels, uh, but have responded some with a fixed mindset, usually with the same results, and those with a growth mindset. The and some people change along the way. Some people go from a growth mindset to a fixed mindset, and 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 they become they they have the opposite effect. So it's amazing to see we're in control of all that and. Your response to all of this stuff, like you were talking about when the meeting you were having, your situation drastically improved, not because it really improved, it just you were able to change your perspective of your situation. Right, exactly. In fact, uh, we've talked also in the past about the role that um, safety plays. I mean, you, you referred to somebody who prefers to st stay in a safe situation rather than venturing out in some way. And how those safe situations often aren't all that safe. In fact, they can be pretty painful. They're just familiar, so we, we kind of stick with them. And as you were talking, there's actually a historic example of that that came to my mind. And, and when I realized what I was thinking about, I realized how it all added up. It was one. It was a way of looking at it I hadn't really thought about before. But you, you use the phrase, the ship is safest when it's in the harbor. And I realized that... On December 7th, 1941, they would have disagreed with you in Pearl Harbor in Hawaii because all the ships were in the harbor and they all got destroyed by a Japanese right. attack. Exactly. Exactly. It, it, <laughs> it, yeah, and, and so much of it is perspective or, or a, a, a less uh, uh, a less intense version of that uh, and not with so much consequence. In, yeah, right. In the movie uh, uh, Forrest Gump, uh, Forrest Gump and, and Captain Dan, or Lieutenant Dan, went out on their shrimp boat not knowing there's a hurricane. Mm. And they're the only boat that survived because they were out in it, and the ones that were docked were the ones that were destroyed. Yeah. And that, mm -hmm. that, made the, that, that made the shrimp company super successful because they're the only one with an active ship. <laughs> so, it, it would, you know, I, I like the example a little better than the World War II one because... Yeah, it's a little, little bit less uh, dire, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the you know... The, the Forrest Gump one works out a lot better for Forrest and uh, right. and Lieutenant Dan. Uh, so absolutely, uh, but but you you see that daily. You see that you know great stories of people taking something and by allowing traumatic events or or events that are scary. Or, the only way you can be propelled out of your comfort zone to, sometimes is to be evicted from it. Life will sometimes evict you from your comfort zone. 
uh, and you think it's the worst thing that ever happened, only to be placed in the past of the greatest thing that ever happened. And all that is your how you're looking at it. I know in my personal and prof- in my professional life over the years, and I've, I've learned that lesson multiple times of desperately, oh my gosh, I've lost this job or, or I'm going to have to move on or this company closed and all. But I kept getting moved to a better position each time. So it got to a point where the last couple of changes, uh, when I was working for somewhere else, it didn't even it didn't even rock my boat at all. It was like, yeah, okay, mm. it's cool. It's going to work out great, and it did. It worked out. Better. I mean, obviously, we've talked about that before. Right. It's such an amazing way it worked out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the it 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 kind of asks or begs to ask the question, and I know this is what you deal with a lot with your clients. So I'm sure you can talk for about ten minutes on it. But uh, it begs the question: Well, okay, once I'm recognizing that security really isn't all that secure. And that I actually have my best growth when I get outside my comfort zone. Um, and I really don't want to have to wait for my life to collapse in order for me to start taking advantage of that fact. What can I do? I mean, I, I don't want to collapse. I don't want to have a, a, you know, a financial collapse or a relationship collapse or my health to collapse in order to have, to, in order to climb out of my comfort zone. But that comfort zone is so comfortable. Yeah, I recognize bad things can happen there, but it's still comfortable. What can I do? Well, and part of that is the definition of what comfort is. And and that that's what you, you – we are sold a concept that the least amount of effort in life is comfortable. Mm. Um, the, the the idea that, okay, you you know, your ultimate goal in life is to work, for, what, 30 years, and then you retire and do nothing. That's mm. what you're sold as the American dream is. You – you're older now and you need to do nothing and, mm. and then you die. I mean, it make, doesn't make a lot of sense when you look at that perspective of it, uh, but that's what we are conditioned to do. So, so there's a narrative that the least amount of energy and effort uh, we put in life is, is actually comfortable because you don't require effort. So we're conditioned to believe that. Um, one of the hypotheses that I share with many people is uh, that, and, and, my time frames are off, and you can correct me historically. And and you know, you're much more in tune with this stuff than I am. But it's let's say 1700. I'm just going to use you know 1703. Okay. Uh, the average fam- family, uh, you know, they they had to grow their own food, do their own cows. They had to work, or they were blacks. But they had a lot of work to do. They worked a lot. They mm-hmm. had, you know, the sun came up, you worked. Sun went down, you went to bed. And in, in between, you did a lot. Of, most of your life was creating survival, yeah. and and so there was a lot of work going on. So, you know, the, you you didn't have time to do much other than get up, work, take care of your family, do the stuff you want to do, and then you know, not not what I wanted to do, but stuff you had to do. Then you went to bed. Lights went out. There's no electricity. That kind of thing. well, there was that. I, I don't read in, in historical books, and I, I, I know a lot of psychological uh, documents go back many, many years. There was not a – I'm not saying people didn't feel depressed in 1703. Oh, it but is. They didn't have time to be depressed. They they were the, – the, okay, I'm sorry, I don't have uh, – oh, oh, God, I feel so bad I can't go to work. Then you're going to die for not eating. You know, it's mm. just it, – it's, it, it's, you don't have time not to work. You don't have time to, to worry about this. You had to go take action. So that action kept people from feeling, you know, helpless. And, and, and so as time's gone on and we become more efficient at how we're able to do things and we have a lot more free time and you have a lot of time to worry about, Oh, what am I going to do? Or or, everything's falling apart. And, and, and I'm going to worry about it, worry about it again. In in 1703, you worried about it while you plowed the field, you know, Mm. and your wife was making butter and the kids were cutting down whatever you cut down and crops and all that, you know, uh, you had you had a lot of work to do. So, like you're saying, this this idea that has sold us over the years, uh, the reality of comfort is less effort. Yeah. Well, well, I have found my com- I have readjusted my comfort zone to I love effort. I love struggle. I love that. That is my comfort. In fact, what what I perceive as torture is not being able to do those things. Mm. And that's really important. That's a big difference, Walt. It's a huge difference. Yeah, it's, that, that's a major mind shift right there. I, I, I was especially thinking about how you mentioned that they didn't have time. They didn't have time to worry. And when you said that, it really drilled home for me because 
the average lifespan, and I don't know exactly what it was, but it was probably about 38 to 40 years. So by the time you got right. to 40, there was like a, a 60, 70%, 80% chance you're dead. You know, talk about not having enough time. Oh, boy, you sure didn't have a lot of time, did you? Whereas today, our lifespan is like twice that. Right. And, and so with so much wasted, I've I, I watched um, friends. I watched my dad. He sold the business. <clears throat> excuse me. He sold the uh, family business. Uh, he was relatively young, did well with the sell. And he didn't have to work. Um, and he lasted about a week or two at home before mm. he realized he's got to, he's got to do something. He was yeah. too young to be sitting home all day. Right. Him and my mom would have not. They would have been divorced in another week because he was telling. He tells a funny story. Uh, uh, he, he he'd been home probably about a week, driving my mom crazy. She's doing her normal stuff. <laughs> she's always doing. Right. And so one day he was sitting at the kitchen table watching her cook dinner, and he didn't know how much she he was getting on her nerves over the previous couple of weeks. Mm. And he actually told her, he says, "Honey, there's a better way you can peel those tomato uh, potatoes." <laughs> Now, my mom says she put the knife down, and she said, didn't re even respond to that question. She said, you need to get a job. <laughs> and uh, you, 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 we, when we're to the point you're telling me how to peel potatoes as you sit there, no. you're, you're and, and, and he laughed. He, he realized. He said, you're right. I'm telling my wife how to peel potatoes. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm just here. She, he was uncomfortable. We work the perception or your, your, your program to believe you 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 you're working for that comfort. You're working for the ability to not do anything. If you look at that, that's amazing that that we have done that. My mindset is I I don't I will not quit working. I I don't want to. I don't view it as work. I view it as my career. I love it. I will die in my office or at the gym. I hope <laughs> and uh, and and I. I, I really, I, I don't want to give up what I'm doing. I, yeah. I, I think my mind's sharper than it was 20 years ago. I have a great outlook on life. I, I, would want to, I don't want to not work because I don't view it as a struggle. And so that's adjusting it. But I, I do view it as a struggle, and I, I love the struggle. That's where my excitement is. It's that the, the, that's where reprogramming the mindset to a growth mindset, an action-oriented mindset doesn't have time to dwell on what's not right. Mm -hmm. You become so focused on what is working. I have a, a hundred different directions I could go in my bed. I don't have time to do all the stuff I want to do. I, mm -hmm. I, I have another project that here, another project, and that, I love that feeling. I'm, I'm, I, I just go to, on to the next one. It feels great. Yeah. And that, that's exciting to me. That is exciting. That's good. That's, that, that means that you really are in, in a, uh, a mindset of abundance because abundance is life. It isn't, it, I mean, work can be part of life. Um, you know, travel, uh, family, you know, all kinds of stuff can be part of life. But the point is to have an abundance of it, to have lots of it and to have lots of the, right. the, the parts of life you really want the most. That's the ultimate in abundance. So what you're focusing on is your abundance. And hey, and it, clearly right. the abundance means something positive to you because we can tell just from how you get excited when you're talking about it. No, that's that's well, and, true. And, that, and, and, and that's the big difference. That, that's the difference in how you again, when you're go, abundance it, for me, abundance isn't about to save up and squirrel as much money as possible. So I don't have to do anything that that's that's where I become unproductive. When if if I were to say, OK, well, stop, I, I don't want you to leave your house for six months and I don't want you to do any exercise and I just want you to stay in the house. Well, first of all, you, you'd go crazy, mm. and you, you 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 wouldn't want how. But also, your muscles would atrophy. Uh, your 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 thinking would slow. Yeah. Uh, you, you, your body would not be responding. Your body responds best. I'm in the gym every day of my life, and I work incredibly hard. My body responds to that. Uh, you know, and I I, I eat, I'm exceptionally healthy. I eat well. I and and again, I push my my physicals. Uh, all my physical limits every day in the gym on purpose, and, I, and it still responds. I'm 57 years old. I, I can lift a lot of weight. I feel great about myself. My mind is clearer at 57 than it was at 30. Mm. Uh, I was in a horrible mindset back then. Yeah. And so, again, the growth mindset uh, that we're talking about is a choice, and it, it's, it's about how you're – I'm going to get up and take on the day, or the day is going to take me on. One mm. of the two. 
And when I take on the day, I get to dictate my response to the result. When the day takes me on, it's going to win. And that's a big difference. Oh, that, that's a scary prospect, the way you phrase that. When the day takes me on, the day's going to win. Like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, well, think about it. But, or, but it's my choice. It, 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 it's not scary when it's my choice. Well, yeah, exactly. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. It, but, yeah, if, if, I go through the, if I go through the day of like, oh, boy, here, here, what's next? Yeah, I promise there's a what's next versus what's next. Bring it. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Whatever's next, I got it. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it handles that. And, and that's, you know, there's a I, – I, I need to remember all the people who have these great quotes. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> you've been, you know, you've been assigned this mountain to move to prove to others it can be moved. You know, and, and maybe if you've been assigned this mountain to move to prove to yourself it can be moved. Life has, has attempted to just beat my ass royally, and it has. Mm. But my response to it has not weakened me. It has strengthened me. That was my choice. That was my choice to do that. I, I you know, that, that, that's a lot of stuff has happened. We talked about a lot of stuff and, and how I choose to do that. It's just so important. I, 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 I see that victim mentality, which uh, is, is being so, yes, life has done this to me. And I'm helpless. My thing is, yes, life has done that to you, comma, and you can be strengthened by your response to it. Not a period of my life has done this to me. That's, and you, you hear that. We hear that weekly when, when, you know, we're down, we're not on Facebook Live today, but we also will get questions of people. And you can hear the desperation and where they're at, not knowing they, they have their own key to this of why do the, and the questions are usually, why do the same things keep happening to me? Mm-hmm. And the response almost always is because you keep responding the same way. That focus is truly important in every single way. And, and learning, when I say the focus is important, I mean, learning to change the focus is important. I mean, we all focus. Yeah. You, you literally cannot go through life without focusing one way or another. Whether or not you're focusing deliberately, right. that's the big question. But, I mean, you're always focusing on something. It's just whether you're doing it by default or you're doing it deliberately. <laughs> And that focus is important. I mean, I was talking about well, it with. Uh, yeah, you can't... I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I don't hear who what you were talking about. That's, that's interesting. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I was going to say that um, when when we're in that place of not not feeling like we can control our focus, that truly is the horrible place. That's the place that doesn't feel good at all. Um, Steve Rowell and I were talking right. the other day about you know there are lots of different practices we we do. Um, that we we talk about on the shows and people engage in and so forth to try to get take kind of take control of our own minds, take control of our own focus. Um, I mean, there's like meditation and there's mirror exercises and there are affirmations and vision boards and you know five by fifty five. What I still don't really know what that is. I mean, there's like a whole bunch of these things that you can do to kind of train yourself, train your mind to focus where you want to focus and and not so much you know go by default on whatever happens to come your way. And yeah, that's what I'm going to look at. One of the things that Steve and I talked mm-hmm. about, and I, I was kind of curious to get your take on, I know I have an idea what your take is going to be, but I'm curious to see what, what you'll say about it. Um, is we, we do these things in order, we, we find these different practices in order to help ourselves feel better. But how much time do we actually spend going back to good things that happened on, you know, happened in our lives and focusing on them? And in the course of that conversation, I realized pretty quickly and pointed out to him, you know, if I try to remember things that happened in my life that were good things, I find that it's kind of tough for me to remember the the feeling. I mean, I remember abstractly what the feeling is, but reproducing the level, the intensity of the feeling, that's the part that seems hard to me. And he thought about it and he says, well, you know, that, that really comes down to how much time and energy you put into putting on that attention because the more that's law of attraction the more you focus you put on something the more it builds up it creates a momentum so as you if, if you just spend more time focusing on some great event that happened in your life you'll start to feel it stronger and stronger and stronger until finally it's to the point is it feels exactly the way it did back when it happened and that led me to think right. you know what we should probably do in addition to all these other practices maybe we should like create lists of all the things that were good in our lives and just practice going back and trying to remember what they were like and just playing with them until we build up the the energy behind them. I mean, that's probably one of the most powerful things we could do. And he seemed to think that was that was true, also. I, so I wanted to run that by you to see what you thought about that. Well, it, yeah, I mean, it, there's there's a, a a term called traumatic recall. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when things happen, when I ask one of the questions 
that I ask people often is what is the the number one thing? What's the first thing you remember in your life? Mm-hmm. And you know, how old were you? Three, four, five, whatever. You know, and, and they think there's a relevance to it. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, but my, it almost always involves something of – it's either a traumatic memory or a euphoric memory. There, there's almost always that. But usually when people are seeing me, because there's almost – they've been conditioned to say, well, I remember when this happened, this traumatic event happened. And it gets stored in the brain. Right. There's a bunch of great events that happened, but they, you know, I remember this happened when I was four – and I don't have another memory until I was seven. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember anything specific. Uh, so you, 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 the, the brain marks things a certain way and it, it, it holds on to them. But, you know, it, 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 there's a, probably we remember a lot more on the subconscious, but just for the, as far as what we can recall, mm-hmm. these memories, they go back, but they're, they're more, I remember, you know, some horrible events when I was a kid, you know, uh, you know, getting beat up or, or certain things that happened. I don't remember a lot of great events. Now, I know they were there, but we and, and then and then again, the conditioning of what we're reading or feeling in, in life is it, what what happened to you. So that becomes brought to the forefront. So the power we give to that, uh, what you're saying, if we can create or or remember or or go back and look at pictures of your birthday parties, how fun that must have been, and all this other stuff. You can you can create those memories of joy again, mm. and that becomes your focus versus the trauma things. Mm. There's a million and different million different ways we all get to where we're at. There, there, we all experience all these things in life, and our response to them and, and our attitude toward them is sort of the answer. But again, we're conditioned to do things through a negative uh, way of thinking and re- reprogramming to a positive recall. Uh, Abraham Hicks. Uh, one day I was listening to one of their talks that it really, I remember this really angering people when therapists hear about this. Mm. Uh, uh, one of the talks was that this lady said, well, I was abused as a child and, and I'm not able to move back. And, and she was pretty blunt in the response. It was mm. like, well, you can, that, that's your choice. If you, <laughs> or you can, you can let that go. Well, the lady was a little offended. Well, yeah. what do you mean? That's my choice. I didn't have anything to do with that. It's like, well, no, no. Yeah, but if your focus is going to be on that, they're more about where you're putting your focus. Well, most therapists are like, oh, that's horrible advice. Mm. Uh, but from a law of attraction standpoint, we're, we're in charge of, of, of how you're viewing it. I know I am strengthened by my, my rough events. I have become stronger because of that. I know people that have been, been destroyed by much less event, events, than, by, you know, by far less traumatic events. Uh, that, that have been destroyed by it. I know people that are, you know, freaked out over, uh, you know, I, I know people of great wealth that have the hardest time coping because their life has been so easy. They haven't had any conditioning or strengthening in the areas that matter. I, I, I you know, everybody talks about everybody wants to be wealthy, and I'm all, I want everybody to be wealthy. I think we can all be wealthy. But when you become wealthy without any effort or without any struggle or without any grounding, then wealth uh, it can become a curse because your perspective is so limited. You know, I've heard people just just say, "I can't believe this happened to me." I go, "Nothing really happened. This is not a big deal." But you're making it a big deal, mm-hmm. and uh, they they haven't struggled, and, and struggle sometimes gives us new perspective. So the the overall thing, the theme of this show is like you're saying the 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 way we go with this. Everything is your perspective. You get to program it. You're in charge of it. You get to live it. Uh, and, and you're empowered by it. This is not a message of negativity. This is a me- message of strength that you're empowered by your perspective. And when you when you do not allow that awfulizing, catastrophic uh, uh, mindset to cascade downward, get up, face it. There's going to be a chain of events that happens today. That a lot of it's out of my control. But how I respond to that will be 100 percent of my control all day. So it really comes down to one very simple question, which is, how are you going to respond to everything that happens? Because that yes. controls everything. Yes. How are you going to respond? And yes. and when we are fortunate enough to have an experience where we we recognize that we've changed changed our our response in a in a substantial way from what we normally would have done, and then got a substantially different result from what we normally would have expected, that's that's where we realize, 
hey, this change of perspective stuff really does work. It really does produce a different result. And that's empowering. And and at the same time, it's exceptionally scary to give up your conditioned way of thinking. It it it, it feels unsafe. Mm. Uh, it feels, you know, it, it it it's just this unsafe feeling. Yeah. And you know, I I I get it. Uh, you know, you, you know, it, it's one of those things that you, we we place ourselves in this uh, mindset. We're we're conditioned into the mindset where we're just ah. Uh, Everything is this or everything that when you have the key to this and you have the, the key to life, the key to the law of attraction is what we're talking about. And it seems that when I have great empathy for people, we're undoing a lifetime of programming. In fact, very, very well-intended family members and friends and therapists and counselors will say, oh, no, oh, no, you're, 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 you're stepping out. This is dangerous. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're. Safety is what you're after, and and that that message applies a lot of times, but a lot of times it is not. Mm. Um, you know, it it, it is a, a a very very dangerous place to to get stuck. And innovation happens from change. You, you know, I see this a lot with uh, you know in the political climate, and, and not that I watch the news, but you know, it, it's the idea that things are changing, and you see people that are holding on so desperately to the old ways. Mm -hmm. uh, Things were better. The 1950s were the greatest time in our country. Uh, we hear that. We hear this. We it, because again, the people saying it, it may have been their greatest time. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole entire group of people that it wasn't a good time for. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, so to the idea that we we again, how you're perceiving it is filtered through your lens of what you're seeing, and you're in control of that lens. And yep. at the same time. There's people that say, well, my ancestors in the 50s were treated bad. Yes, they were. And you being victimized by it now doesn't help you either. So there's two sides to the coin. It, it's either side of it, but your perspective is the ultimate superpower. Uh, you, you, if you want to change your life, you change your perspective, period. That's it. Now, there's ways to do it. It's more complicated than just saying it. But you, it, it can be as simple as just forcing your perspective to a different manner. Mm hmm yeah, and I'm reminded of the fact that so often when people are, are talking about uh, the traumatic stuff that happened in their lives or the traumatic stuff that's going on today, they will go out of their way to stay focused on the traumatic stuff. Um, politicians will do it. Uh, very often business leaders will do it. Um, pundits in the media will do it. Lots and lots of people, though, and, and you can actually point out to them, well, you know, there's this whole great thing going on on this other side of the issue or this other side of, this, of the situation or, or people who are living it differently that you're overlooking. And the answer will be, yes, you're right, there is that. But, and now all of a sudden they're back on the negative thing again. So after spending 25 right. minutes on the negative thing, they spent five seconds on the positive thing and, oh, can't stay there very long. Let's go back to the negative thing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we actually exactly, set yeah. ourselves up in huge ways just because of where we decided to focus. Like, oh, yeah, I know that good stuff's going on over there, but I'm not going to look at that because that doesn't tell the whole story. <laughs> well, you know, when you, when you look at productivity, you look at where we're at, you look at the innovations and stuff, and we, we're, we live in amazing time. All, oh, of yeah. the, all the information in the world is at our fingertips. Uh, we have some real innovations. Uh, you know, the, the idea that we could – we could be a totally solar wind powered country. We don't need fuel, fossil fuels in a lot of ways. I mean, there, there's a lot of things we could get to. And, mm -hmm. and I know there's, it's not that simple, but I look at the new economy, the new stuff that would come with this new innovation, but there's people fighting it. There's people fighting against this change, oh, yeah. not because it's good for the country, but we don't want to give up the economy that exists already. A new economy scares them. And, and the people who are in favor of it, they're they're actually fighting it more than anybody. They're they're, they're resisting the change more than anybody because they're the ones who are constantly screaming, "Oh my God, with you know climate change and and horrible things going on, we got to go solar, we got to go wind." But you know the pr big problem is the fossil fuels. We got to stop using the fossil fuels, and then they spend the next half hour talking about fossil fuels. So they spent five right. seconds on wind and solar, and then a half an hour on fossil fuels. What are they going to get? Well, what they're going to get yeah. is a whole bunch of stuff about fossil fuels, which is the thing they don't want. Right. <laughs> right. And, it, well, it, and, and that's that energy you're putting forth versus, you know, if, if our focus could be on it, yeah, this is, there's a limitless abundance. And we, 
it, it, it all comes from moving forward. It's all comes from new stuff. There's an entirely new economy in a hundred years from now, when you and I are talking on the show, um, we will be discussing, wow, remember a hundred years ago, Walter yeah, right. was talking about this and look how easy this is. And so you, you, you'll look at that uh, and, and see it, it'll be an entirely different economy because that, that's, that's the, what we're after. It's about growth. It's about perspective. And, and it's exciting. We, uh, you know, I want everybody, I know we're coming to the, near the end here, but our, our, our audience, that, that the main issue, when you program your brain and enforce your perspective to look at where is the growth in this and you don't run from the struggle of it, uh, amazing miracles literally happen in your life, or seemingly miracles. It's just the law of attraction at work. Absolutely. And, and of course, the really cool thing is that 100 years from now, we're going to be sitting here talking about this. I'm going to be 161. You're going to be 157. And we're not going to think twice about it because our thoughts got us there, right? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I plan on being here. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. So, so, so now we have that show scheduled for 100 years in the future. We'll have to fill in some shows in between. But in the meantime, we hope that everyone exactly. will join us next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.